You are watching the American Conference on ESPN. Coke Arena is the site for a Thursday night conference game, the first ever meeting between the UCF Knights out of Orlando and the 17th ranked Wichita State Shockers. Kevin Brown alongside John Thompson the third. Thanks for being with us on this Thursday night, a night where Wichita State looks to snap a rare losing streak, John. No, absolutely. They've lost two in a row. Greg Marshall, the Papa Shocker, has been in a bad mood. You know, he said Houston did to us what we normally do to other teams. They outworked us. So I expect Wichita State to come out with a lot of intensity today. Well, they catch a break and that they will not see the 7-6 behemoth taco fall on the bench and done for the season, the shoulder injury for the Knights. Yeah, you know, injuries are part of the game. But what UCF has had to endure this year has been excessive. Aubrey Dawkins goes down with a shoulder injury out for the season. B.J. Taylor misses 16 games, all-conference player. And then Taco Fall, torn labor. So they're going to have to adjust, adapt, and keep on moving. Doug Sermons throws it up. Pat Adams and Juan Groover are other two officials. It is Wichita State ball to start. And the Shockers have a brand new starting lineup after the two game losing streak. Landry Shamit and Rashard Kelly, the two holdovers. Rano Nerger, Austin Reeves, and Marcus McDuffie all in the lineup tonight. We'll get into those reasons momentarily. Reeves off the shot fake. Nerger missing the long two of the rebound to A.J. Davis for UCF. B.J. Taylor is starting for the Knights, number one with the ball right now. His first start since the opener, last two games off the bench after missing 16 with a fractured foot. And we expected that. I mean, he's back. He's healthy. He's 100%. And, and especially coming off a, a, a nice game the last game. You know, so he, him in the starting lineup, he makes them go. So they're going to need him to be good right from the beginning. Tad Brown off the nice bounce feed from Terrell Allen, fouled by Rado Nerger. And it'll be free throws for Brown, who is the new starting five for the Knights with Taco Fall done for the year. And, you know, Brown doesn't necessarily have to do anything different than he has been doing. He's just going to have to do it longer. And so he's going to have to step up and fill the void, you know, along with several other players on, on UCF team. What I want to look at right now is what defense does Coach Dawkins and UCF go to? They're going to play some zone. They're going to play some man. They're going to play a matchup. They go to this token press right here just to try to slow Wichita State down, make them use time in the backcourt. Not trying to get a turnover, but just to try to slow down this high-powered offense. For the Shockers, Connor Frankamp missed a practice earlier in the week. He was sick. Shaq Morris missed one with a migraine. That's why Frankamp and Morris are not starting. Merger is along with Reeves. And Nerger has the first two. Yeah, he shuffled his feet a little bit right there. I thought it was a travel. You know, but you mentioned Fran Camp and you mentioned Shaq Morris. So you come off a two-game losing streak in conference, and then you show up for work, on, for practice, for work, and you have a migraine and you're sick. Uh, that, that coach is trying to shake things up right here. You, you just can't do that. As for the fifth spot, Marcus McDuffie is in for Zach Brown, and Greg Marshall said, if Brown didn't have a great game on Saturday, but also wanted to give McDuffie a shot back in the starting lineup. Marcus, who missed the first three months of the season with a stress fracture in his left foot. So the new starting five for Wichita State off of a home loss to SMU and a road loss at Houston. Nearly a turnover, stays with the Shockers. And Richard Kelly puts in a two. You see UCF's in that matchup zone right there. They've had to alter things slightly. With Taco following the game, they wanted to funnel everything to the rim. They're not necessarily going to do that now, but that defense is active, active hands. It's been effective so far. Foul against Marcus McDuffie on the push. Well, Wichita State was frankly out hustled by Houston in that 14 point loss. It was rarely close on Saturday. UCF, meanwhile, coming off a two point win over winless South Florida over the weekend. Though the Knights were without A.J. Davis along with Fall and Chance McSpadden out again today. UCF's best perimeter defender on the shelf. Taylor too long off the spin. Brown with a miss. Neither shot got the rim. McDuffie, nice feed to Kelly, but an offensive foul before the shot. 
That is the second quick one against Marcus McDuffie. And McDuffie's first start of the year. Well, that didn't last very long. Terminated 223 in on a couple of fouls for Zach Brown. Great rotation on defense over there by Jesus to take that charge right here. Now, I think that we're going to need to see B.J. Taylor be more aggressive. In the South Florida game, he waited until the second half. They're going to need him to start off right now. Taylor, the preseason all-conference guard, first-teamer. 17 and a half points, three and a half assists per game last year. Again, just his fourth game of the season. Nice ball reversal, and Davis misses a three. Rebound to Rashard Kelly for Wichita State. Here is Landry Shamit, all conference preseason guard. Nice movement right there. Shamit way off on a three, and Brown cannot save it. Well, you know, Shamit, you know, he shot one for six from three against Houston. It starts off with his first ball being an air ball right there. Um, you know, so hopefully, Coach Marshall scratching his head right there. You know, he's not, that's not going to happen too often. Sham is going to snap out of it. Greg Marshall said this was an intense week of practice, but a productive one. Really liked the way the team responded yesterday and Tuesday in practice. Deion Griffin into the game for the Knights, number 10, three point weapon. UCF not a strong offensive team. And they have not played like one early on as Brown misses. No, they're struggling down there. And the Shockers defense has been very good. UCF has not had a quality look yet. Had the quality look missed by Nerger in the rebound to Allen. UCF, per Ken Pomeroy's efficiency metrics, fifth best defensive team in the country. And Davis lays it in for a team that ranks 291st in overall offense. They will need to put in a little better performance today against a Wichita State team that is the best offensive team in the American. Look at those active hands. You know, obviously their defense is going to be slightly different without Taco in the back, but it's still outstanding. They're active, they communicate, they mix it up. The Foul on the baseline will send us to a break. An early lead for Wichita State at home. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Carl's Jr. and Hardy. Introducing the $5 All-Star Meals. There's no better way to spend five bucks. And H&R Block. Get your taxes won. Strong defensive start for both teams here in Wichita, Kansas. Shockers ahead 4-2 at the first media timeouts. Now, Wichita State coming off a couple of losses at home to SMU on the road to Houston. The question was, how would they respond? What would the intensity level be like? What have you seen in the first four and change? Well, you know, I think the intensity level has been fine. They're active. They're into it. I think the execution has to be a little better. You know, against Houston, they had 18 turnovers. So far already, they have uh, two turnovers. You know, and a lot of that should be go, go towards UCS activity on their defensive end. But I think both teams are a little, a little antsy right now, a little flat, and sooner or later that both teams will loosen up. But I think overall, you know, the Shockers' intensity has been fine. You know, the, uh, he has Shaq Moores and Frank Camp back in there after not starting them, so we'll see if things change right now. And neither Morris nor Frank Camp started because they each missed a practice this week. Morris with a migraine. Frank Camp was sick. Daryl Willis into the game off the Wichita State bench as well. Locus Ovidas into the game at the five for UCF, number 11, replacing Chad Brown for the first time today. Five to shoot for Allen. Terrell Allen misses a deep one, rebounded by Davis. Second leading rebounder in the American Conference, A.J. Davis at 8.4 per game. And, and that's what Wichita State does not want to see, those second shots by UCF. That was not a good second shot. Allen with an air ball from inside the elbow. Johnny Dawkins, second year at UCF. Former Stanford head coach took over for Donnie Jones, who is actually on the opposing sideline tonight. First year assistant for Wichita. Zach Brown throws it down off the lob from Landry Shannon. Yeah, we saw them working on that today at shoot around. 
when UCF goes to that zone, the backside forward has to pay attention or they're going to keep screening him and keep looking for those lobs. Brown did not score, fouled out in just eight minutes in the loss to Houston. There's a three for Dayon Griffin, who has started to shoot much better the Louisiana Tech transfer for the Knights. You know, and the pace of this game is right where UCF wants it. They don't want to fly up and down the court. They're, they're forcing Wichita State to use time on the clock and work the ball on offense. We have seen some ugly looking shots early. Another air ball, this one from Brown. You see on this backside here, the backside of UCF's defense falls asleep. He gets screened. You see A.J. Davis pointing. He's got to not just point, he's got to get over there and help. Pointing can only do so much in this day and age. Maybe we'll figure out the technology for that in a few years. B.J. Taylor guarded by Zach Brown. Here is Ovidas against Morris. Obi Das got it out to Allen, and we've got to travel. Saturday on ESPN, we kick off the fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge with Trey Young. Oklahoma visits Alabama 2:15 at 4:30. It's Texas A&M, Kansas, and at seven, Kentucky searches for a signature win against seventh-ranked West Virginia. All those games and more on the ESPN app. You know, UCF does a very good job of disguising what defense they're in. Their man-to-man -man looks like their zone. Their matchup looks like their regular zone. And so, hello. That's one way to figure out the disguise. That's right, baby. Another lob assist for Shamit Big. Shaq Morris with the throwdown. Shamit drives and just throws it up. And Big Shaq goes and gets it. Taylor lost his footing. And that's another turnover. Nice aggressive head right there, hedge right there by Shaq Morris. He's one of the main people that coach wanted to. Let's, let's see if he can get his energy up. You know, Shaq's a big body, but he's athletic. He can move. He's fast. He's quick. Don't, don't, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Don't let that, 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 that body think that he can't move. And so coaches wants him to move. That's a body that's been transformed in his five years here at Wichita State in terms of work in the strength and conditioning room. And as the folks that try to unlock his immense potential. Missed three by Frank Camp. And we'll head the way of UCF. Greg Marshall wants to keep the pressure on this Wichita State team. Has done just about everything well this year except forcing turnovers. They have not been great in that department. Is that pressure meant to force turnovers or just to make UCF a little more uncomfortable? You know, I think both teams press is, is trying to accomplish the same thing just to slow down their offense and shorten the time that they can execute their half-court offense. Right, Greg Marshall not a fan of that call against Zach Brown on the drive by Taylor. The crowd doesn't like it either. To be honest, I thought, I thought Taylor was tripped. Yeah, Brown was straight up, so that's where the foul was on the trip. First against Zach Brown. B.J. Taylor. And you see early, Zach is guarding B.J. Taylor. Zach Brown is. And his size and his length is bothering B.J. a little bit. Now, B.J. will figure it out. Morris, nice feed, Samadji Haynes-Jones. And Morris has his second basket in the paint. Great job by the Shockers of not settling for just taking threes. They're getting against that zone. They're getting the ball into the interior almost every time. Here's a deep three from Georgia Moomin, the former walk-on who earned a scholarship right before the start of conference play. He is a three-point marksman. Exciting moment for him and his teammates when he earned a scholarship. And Johnny Dawkins said it was one of the great moments in his coaching life. Morris with a third field goal, all of them right near the rim. That's an area, John, where Wichita State really did struggle against Houston, just finishing from underneath. Yeah, they did. And I'll tell you what, we were talking about Moomin and his shooting and receiving scholarship. He needs to do a better job of keeping Shaq off the boards right there. And that's, that's a lot easier said than done, but he needs to do a better job right there. Shaq just kind of big boyed him, pushed him under the basket. Three baskets for Shaq Morris. One of them on an assist from Landry Shamit who has been the distributor to an early highlight reel.
single day. Two power conferences, 10 games with new stars, familiar legends, and epic matchups. All for bragging rights. The Big 12 SEC Challenge on ESPN this Saturday. Terrific slate of games this Saturday starting at noon. Two of the nation's best conferences this year go head to head. We are in the American Conference tonight. Wichita State trying to snap a two game losing streak against a UCF team that needs a signature win if it wants to insert itself into postseason conversation. And for Greg Marshall, you know, these losing streaks have been few and far between. They had won 27 in a row here at Coke Arena before last Wednesday against SMU. They won 11 straight on the road before the blowout at Houston on Saturday. He changes to the starting lineup. A tense week of practice, he hopes, results in a win. Dayon Griffin, another three. The Knights, one for six from two-point range, have now hit three from deep. And Zach Brown answers. Right back at you. For the, for the Shockers' first three of the game. Wichita State shooting seven for 13 from the field early. And it's good to see if you're a Shocker fan, Brown get going. Five early points for him. Did not score in just eight minutes on Saturday. Taylor with the screen from Ovidas. Davis goes to the offhand right, rebounded by Shaq Morris. The Shockers are doing a, a, a very good job of containing B.J. Taylor. B.J.'s effective, not just because of what he does, but his penetration usually opens up passing for the other for his, his teammates, and they're doing a good job of limiting that. Just saw a nice dip under from Darrell Willis. Terrific score off the bench for Wichita State. The Juco transfer to second Shocker year. Ovi does. That shot won't count. One too many steps across the lane trying to get around Morris. Hey, tip off your weekend tomorrow with a star-studded NBA Friday matchup. James Harden of the Rockets against Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, and the Pelicans in the Big Easy. At 8 Eastern, 7 Central, our coverage begins an hour earlier with NBA Countdown. Now, UCF's not going to have success throwing it to Ovidas on the block and have him trying to go one-on-one -on -one against Shaq. They have to throw it down there, but then get movement and cuts off of that instead of just standing around. Both times he caught it down there, his teammates were just watching him. And that, that, that's going to force him to take those shots. And he's had two bad shots, I believe, in one turnover already. Haynes Jones misses a two. Uncontested rebound for Obidas, the transfer from Texas Tech. Nice take by Griffin, who has been aggressive early for the Knights. Eight points for Dayon Griffin out of UCF's 13. And let's look at UCF, who, who doesn't, they don't want a fast-paced game, but they are going to look to start taking advantage of those opportunities more often. Willis fouled. Will UCF be faster-paced without Taco Fall the rest of the year, do you think? I don't, I don't really think so. Um, you know, conventional wisdom says, of course, they, they have the big plodding guy out of there, they're going to start playing faster. But I think that they've settled into their rhythm. They understand that they're not going to beat too many teams. They're just flying up and down the court. Might they be faster than they were? Yes. But even with Taco, those opportunity breaks, they always look for. And with BJ being back, they're going to get more of those. Mass substitutions for Wichita State. Nurser and Shamit check in. Kelly waiting for the free throw. Chad Brown has returned for UCF. Wichita State slowly walking away. I look for UCF to try to go to Davis down this end. Oh. Offensive rebound by Reeves. Just in the middle of three black shirts, came up with it. Three, three, three UCF players in, Reeves comes up with it. Shabbat, excellent three-point shooter. With a miss, Willis with the follow, and a chance for a hard three. Daryl Willis, Jr. Look at, look at Coach Marshall over there cheering him on. That's Shocker basketball. Shot goes up, three black shirts. They get it out, kick it, sham it, misses. Nice, aggressive offensive rebound, and one. Wichita State, third in Division I in rebound margin. They out-rebound their opponents by 10 and a half boards per game. And Willis, after missing the second free throw earlier in the possession, 
finishes with a three-point play and gets a big pat on the back from Greg Marshall at a standing ovation from the folks here in the roundhouse. These people know what Shocker basketball is. That hustle, that effort, that's what it's all about. Two hundred and seventh consecutive regular season crowd of ten thousand or more here in Coke Arena. One of the toughest venues to play in at all of college basketball. Davis with a three and UCF. Normally not this strong of an outside shooting team. They average just five threes per game. Well, the Knights have already hit four. No, and, and Davis with the three, but that was B.J. Taylor who gets into the middle of the lane. Pivots, draws two or three men to him, and then kicks it out to a wide open tiller. That's one of BJ's strengths. He, everyone around him is better because people pay so much attention to him. He gets in there and just picks the defense part. Similar situation right there. Davis tried his luck, only a 19 and a half percent shooter from deep. Shamit. Wichita State so good at making the extra pass. Frank Camp, a step back. He's got a triple. He, the young man does not miss too many shots. Now, you said it earlier, UCF has taken and made more threes so far than they normally do. But they can't fall in love with that. I don't think they're going to be able to win the game on their three-point shooting. They have to find a way to score in the paint and get into the paint. That's one way. Right on cue. The freshman. Cesar De Jesus at a Jersey City. Jersey City kid who's led them in scoring in the conference play. Shabbat with the answer. Starting to feel like this game's being played more at Wichita State's tempo now, do you think? Well, the last couple of possessions. Nice contest by Reeves. Got a hand on Taylor's shot. That's the size bothering Taylor again. Austin Reeves. Fan favorite plays about as hard as anybody on this Shocker roster. He and Rashard Kelly maybe the two most active in Saturday's loss. Let's, let's get some good execution here for UCF. Take your time. Uh, not what you would file under good execution. I'm no, afraid. not at all. Kelly, and that's a blocking foul. Davis was not set. A.J. Davis picks up his second foul. Johnny Dawkins has a decision to make when we return to Wichita. And thank you. We look at the AP top 10. And that win for Purdue, it's 16th in a row as the Boilermakers continue to reign supreme and a talented Big Ten this year with that surprising Ohio State team uh, knocking on the door of the top 10. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I think it's still early to start looking at all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's, got, there's such parity in college basketball this year there's still going to be a bunch of shakeups let's just sit back and enjoy the ride and wait for a couple of weeks before I'm we just start saying the big ten's good they you, are good. you no, can't no, you can't me. stop kinda, me from saying I that i kind of flipped the script on you and went somewhere else with that but without a doubt the big ten is outstanding this year i still like that michigan state team yeah. free throw for richard kelly and darrell willis will return for wichita state but one thing i think we need to look at here UCF has made seven field goals. Four of them have been threes. That, that's not who they are. They have to find a way to make some two-point shots, get the ball to the paint. Every time they get in there, they're getting smothered by Wichita State's big men. How do you think the easiest way is for them to go about that? No, I think they still need to do what, what B.J. Taylor is trying to get in there, but then have your perimeter people slide to the open areas and the gaps, and maybe second and third rotation look for some penetration. Freshman Miles Douglas, four to shoot. Has to be to Jesus. Shot clock violation. The Shockers are back to playing defense. They took a little break last week. They're back to playing defense. Everything, every possession is like pulling teeth for UCF right now. 
Now we should say again this is a UCF team that's near 300th in the country in offensive efficiency. All the same those numbers are without B.J. Taylor for all but three games. That being said Wichita State has to love the efforts early in this one after two straight losses. Dropped ten spots in the AP poll. Willis tried his luck on a three. Long rebound to Dayon Griffin. A chance perhaps to run. And Griffin nearly had another three. Contested rebound won by DeJesus. Good hustle all around. Douglas long at a three-point try. And an offensive rebound for Allen. Griffin another one. Now see, coach is about to lose his mind over there. Rightfully so. That's three offensive rebounds in one possession. All right, Coach Marshall, that's, that, looked, that looked like the Houston game all over again. Craig Martin. I started cutting you off. To, no, he, I was going to say, what you're going to say, we got five subs coming in for Wichita State. A complete line change as Morris gets the rejection. Well, if you're in a gold jersey now, you know you're out at the next stoppage. Might as well make it count. Brown in the corner. He will not. No, that, that's exactly that, That's the Houston game all over again. Now, it did end with a nice block right there, though. Greg Marshall has done this a couple of times this year with a full line change. We'll see when he gets a chance. He will now on the kick by Willis. Everybody out of the pool. And they're going to hear it. They're going to hear it when they get over to the bench. Or at halftime. He's just staring at him right now. <laughs> this is what we call the silent treatment. Trust me, that's not going to last. <laughs> that silent treatment is for right now. <laughs> Pretty soon, and definitely when they go back in that tunnel for halftime, they're going to hear. Did you ever pull out all five guys in non-garbage time in a scenario like yes, that? Yes, absolutely. How quickly did they hear it? Hold on a sec. Ovidas with a miss, too. No, that, that's what they have to get it down there. You see, Ovidas had three people around him. So you, you have to get it in the paint, but then he doesn't have to shoot every time. This is what they need. Can they convert in transition? DeJesus, terrific driver. That shot missed. Allen, another offensive rebound. Moomin, long on a three. UCF has gone cold from beyond the arc. And that's not surprising. Like, that, 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 that's who they are. Nice drive by Haynes Jones. Got Ovidas in the air, and he will go to the line. They're, they're getting open threes. They're taking the open threes. They're not making open threes. Okay, so I just stated the obvious. What they have to do, they have to get ready to throw it down inside and then be able to rotate out. Samaje Haynes Jones, 71% free throw shooter, and Johnny Dawkins, I believe, has just been teed up. Johnny Dawkins is. Incensed right now and has to be restrained by his assistant coaches. Coach is upset. I think his assistants had to grab him a little sooner than that because they could have given Johnny a, a, another tech. And he's saying this on, this on the penetration. When UCF is penetrating, they're not calling any of those fouls. And he's in, in coach in Coach Dawkins' opinion, when Wichita State's going to the basket, they're giving them the fouls. They have to, his assistant coaches right now have to make sure that Johnny doesn't pick up another tech. We've got a timeout. Called by Johnny Dawkins after Reeves hits a couple of technical free throws. Cooler heads hoping to prevail for the folks from Orlando. Guys, thank you. Johnny Dawkins picked up a technical for UCF, called a timeout after a couple of free throws made by Austin Reeves. And, and, and Coach Dawkins is a little upset because he feels that on UCF's penetration, when they do get 
in the lane. When B.J. Taylor does go down the lane, they're getting bumped, they're getting pushed, and the calls aren't being made. And then down the other end of the court, he thinks that, you know, they're, they're, every time there is penetration, the call is being made. To be honest, I, I, I may agree with Coach Dawkins yeah. a little bit so far. I think that they have gotten in there, been Bush pumped and bumped, bumped and touched, and fouls weren't called. But Johnny's calmed down. That, you know, a lot of coaches, you go through and say, let me pick up a tech to, to fire my team up. That, that was not that. He legitimately was upset. He legitimately was mad. Well, the fouls are now even across the board, six apiece. A.J. Davis has not played the last three and change with two fouls for UCF. This is the largest lead for Wichita State. And they go to a 1-3-1 -one -one defense right here. B.J. Taylor has still not scored. 0 for 4 from the field. What do you see from UCF defensively? Well, they've gotten out of their zone. The Shockers did a good job of, of taking advantage of the middle against their zone. Now UCF said, well, hey, we're just going to guard him. Four to shoot. Reeves. High rebound to Chad Brown. Man's rebound right there by Brown. You could hear it. See, they need more movement. You have one guy dribbling and four guys watching. DeJesus fouled by Haynes Jones. That'll be at least one free throw for UCF. So now what, what Coach Dawkins wants to happen, let's see in this last three minutes they can take advantage of, meaning they're in the one-on-one -on -one now. You know, right there I thought Moomin gave a nice little show shot pump fake. The, the, the defender bit. I think he should have jumped into him. Maybe he shoots three foul shots. But you have to make these foul shots right here. And what I was saying earlier, offensively, UCF is standing around. They're just standing around watching the man with the ball. They need more movement to move the Shockers' defense and then attack. It's a UCF team only averaging 11.3 assists per game. They have just five tonight to Jesus. And you got to make that. Allen in the middle, and Terrell Allen with another offensive rebound for UCF. He is fouled. That is Shamit with his second. Was that foul on Shamit or was it on Morris? I believe it was called on Shamit. Okay. Yeah, that is his second foul. That's seven offensive rebounds for UCF. And finally, a free throw for the Knights. Uh, one for four. Terrell Allen, a young man who, because of B.J. Taylor being out, has played more minutes probably than, than Coach Dawkins wanted him to. I mean, he leads the team in assists. I'm talking about Terrell Allen. He leads the team in minutes played, and he leads the team in steals. I don't think they expected that from him coming into this year, but because of the multiple injuries, he's been forced into that position, and he's produced. Yeah, he has stepped up after coming over from Drexel sitting out last year. Hey, A.J. Davis is back into the game with two fouls for UCF. And Davis got his hand on the ball there, but cleanly. Or was it? Now we have a late whistle and a foul going against Davis, and that is his third foul. Coach Dawkins didn't move that time. He wanted to. So the gamble does not work out. Davis in the game for 12 seconds before he picks up a third and he wants an explanation from Pat Adams. Well, you know, Davis has to be smarter than that. And, and, and I'm not sure whether he was fouled or not. I didn't see it. Re replay coming up right now. Let's see. Penetration. He gets past movement. Uh, you know, you gonna let me say it, Kevin. You're not going to say. I mean, it. here's the thing, though. To your point, <laughs> if you're playing with two fouls, probably don't reach across the way, right? No, exactly. You try to slap the ball. I, I think it was clear from that replay. Davis got all ball. He got all ball yeah. right now. But if you have two fouls, and you know how the officials are officiating the game, and that's one thing that has to be known. You know they're calling those slap fouls. Yeah. Don't 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 put yourself in that in that position. He, he has to be smarter than that. Look, no, Mike. I don't think he fouled the guy, but he has to be smarter than to even try. Exactly. Moment. Another three. They have to get the ball into the paint. They're not going to win by shooting threes. UCF has missed ten shots in a row for the field. 
And most of those have been three-point attempts. Neither team has hit a shot from the field in more than five minutes. Wichita State scored seven in a row from the line. Until now. Shaquille Morris for the nice sweet corner jumper. Step out for three. Morris with nine. And a foul against Frank Camp just under midcourt. Still a one and one. That's the ninth foul against Wichita State. Deion Griffin to the line. You know, this this pace and this score, the Knights are fine with this. You know, this 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 36 to 20, obviously they don't want to be down by that much right now, but this pace is where they want it to be. They have to find a way, they have to make some adjustments at halftime, see if we can get the ball into the paint, see if we can get a few on, on turnovers and missed shots, a few transition opportunities to get some easy baskets. And let's see if we can not just take, we're not a three-point shooting team now. It's a reason why that all those threes are open. You know, that's the guys we, that can't shoot are always open. That's what we heard Wichita State talk about at shoot around, know your shooters and, and know who's not a three-point shooter. Correct. And you know, most players in UCF did not have great three-point numbers this year. Haynes Jones rejected by Brown. Great elevation, Chad Brown. Allen stop and pop at the other end. Great possession right there by the Knights. Defensive effort, defensive intensity turns into a transition basket. Big two minutes here. And a foul with Reeves trying to cut Terrell Allen. Picks it up his second. Here we see. You just need some more of this. Great effort right there, which turns into a breakout run. Nice decision on the other end. Allen stops, pops, little pull-up jumper in the lane. Started with defense. Defensive stops turn to transition offense. The Knights have to see if they can create some more of those opportunities because they're not getting it within the half court. Well, they won't have Allen for the rest of the half. On the bench with his two fouls. So Allen with two, Davis with three, done for this first half. Numbers two and three. With their foul numbers plastered across the front of their black and gold jerseys. And you see the frustration right there a little bit by Allen. You know, they have to make sure that they don't let that carry over into the second half. And I mean, they're frustrated with the officiating, not necessarily with their play. They're frustrated with the officiating. They cannot let that affect them coming into the second half. Taylor. It's been well defended by Zach Brown and a host of others. Now Reeves on him. Taylor fouled by Reeves and a chance for three. Coach Dalton's over there applauding the officials. That's the foul that could have been called on several possessions earlier. The refs didn't see it that way. You see right here the, the persistence of B.J. Taylor. Goes one way, strong, he's so strong. Able to get to where he wants, the slap down right there. Old-fashioned three-point play. You said he makes everyone around him better. Is that his greatest strength as a player? Well, I, I think his decision-making. You know, he knows when it's time for him to shoot, when it's time to get my teammates involved. I know that when he's on the court, his teammates get easier shots. A little 7-1 to surge right now by UCF to cut into what was Wichita State's largest lead. Frank Camp on the screen from Willis. Connor Frank Camp in and out. Offensive rebound for Willis, who lost it on the way down. They got to run, run, run. Taylor all alone. He's got a three. I told you, this UCF team is fine with this pace. Haynes Jones. Morris with a save. Jack Morris trying to shut it inside. Active hands, active hands by UCF on defense. Reeves, Brown came from behind. And Chad Brown played such good defense on that possession, but he is called for the late foul, only his first. Saturday ESPN, the fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. We'll see if Colin Sexton is healthy for Alabama. Could be a great freshman matchup with Trey Young there at 215. 
A&M against fifth-ranked Kansas, Kentucky, number seven, West Virginia. At 7 Eastern, all those games on ESPN, streaming live in the ESPN app. Aren't, aren't we all hoping Colin Sexton's healthy and ready to go so. to see those two young kids go against each other? And even if he's not, we're all still excited to watch Trey Young play. Have you seen either of those two in person? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. They're good. Let's keep it simple. They're, they're there you good. go. Short and sweet. I like it. Great win by Oklahoma on Tuesday over Kansas. Jayhawks second loss in Big 12 play as the rest of the conference tries to end the 13-year conference championship streak. See, that's the call they weren't getting early in the half. That exact same penetration right there. They're getting bumped. They're getting pushed. Now they're getting the call. 29 seconds left. DJ goes to the foul line. Shooting two. And a double bonus. And the second foul against Samaje Haynes-Jones puts Taylor there. B.J. Taylor did not score until the last two possessions. Six points in two trips. And now seven and three. Well, in the South Florida game, he waited until the second half before he got going. Maybe he just needs to let those, get those juices flowing a little bit early on because they're going to they're gonna not, they're going to need him to be aggressive from the beginning in the second half. And again, this is Taylor's fourth game of the year. He played the opener against Mercer, fractured his foot, missed 16 games. He returned for the Cincinnati game, the only game this year where Taylor and Taco Fall played together. Taco announced to be out for the year before the next game, Saturday against South Florida with a torn labor. They can hold it for one shot. They're going to hold it for one shot. Sooner or later, you're going to get an on ball. Watch him trying to get Shem in the opposite corner. There he is, well defended by Griffin. Kept it in bounds, and that's the half. Nice close by UCF. Knights were down 36-20 in the half on an 11-3 run. Wichita State's lead is eight. Taken out of Adnan Verkdal and Cuff and Tom Crean in the studio with all the latest news, scores, and highlights. Guys? Wichita State led by as many as 16 points in the first half. Shockers lead has been sliced in half to eight at the end of 20 minutes of play. Kevin Brown, John Thompson, the third for Wichita State. A strong defensive first half helped out by UCF being maybe a little bit uncharacteristic on offense. Yeah, you know, it's a combination of both. I think that Wichita State's defense was outstanding in getting the deflections and staying in the passing lane. But UCF settled for a lot of threes. You see here, they had seven offensive rebounds. They're getting it and then just passing around, taking quick three-point shots. They have to do a better job of getting into the paint. But you see, every time there's penetration, there's two and three shocker bodies around them. They just have to be more patient and try to get the ball to the interior, come to a jump stop, make better decisions when they get in there. But they're not going to win with their three-point shooting. They haven't won with that all year. Their defense has won games for them, which, is, which was fairly good this half. And then also, you see B.J. Taylor scored the last seven points of the half for UCF. He's going to have to keep that going. Wichita State starts the second half with a different lineup than it began the game. No Landry Shamit. Samaje Haynes-Jones, who barely played the last few games, has the ball right now for the Shockers off a of fine first half, along with Reeves, Morris, Kelly, and Brown. Zach Brown misses. Morris tips it to Kelly, and a chance for a three-point play. Shocker basketball. That, that possession, they got two and three offensive rebounds. That's what they, that's what they do. They, they, they big boy you. They bully you. Yeah, they just picked up Terrell Allen's third for UCF. So Allen and Davis both with three. Shabbat a quiet first half after shooting just two for ten in the loss at Houston Saturday. Allen will check out of the game after 29 seconds with Cesar De Jesus into the game for the Knights. And you know, that's Coach Marshall trying to send messages to his team. I mean, Shabbat obviously is an All-American player. But two points in the first half, you barely noticed he was out there. A couple of nice assists early on. That was about it. Deion Griffin leading the way with 10 points for UCF starting the second half. Taylor working around Brown. Taylor, nice job. Good body control, drawing the short contact and finishing. Body control and strength. You see, twice in that one possession, 
once by Davis and finally by Taylor. They're penetrating going to the rim. Haynes Jones off the shot fake. And Jesus was being yanked by Brown for the foul against Zach Brown, his second. And let's just watch. I, I think just looking at those first two possessions, the first possession, you know, I think Coach Dawkins noticed what we noticed. And they're, they're going to try to get some penetration, get in there instead of just shooting threes. UCF, a team that shoots 44% for the field, scores just 63 and a half per game due to the slow tempo at which it plays. Chad Brown did not score in the first half. And how about this circus shot flipping it up with the left and spinning around Shaq Morris. Yeah, but that was that was what they didn't have success with in the first half. I like the fact that they're going to the block. I like the fact that they threw it to him on the block. But once he gets it, they need to have more movement. Even right there, they were just watching. And he made, as you said, a circus shot. Morris called for a travel before the basket. Greg Marshall is searching the entire arena looking for where the travel was in his estimation. It was not there. I think, I think Greg's asking Johnny, did he, did he, did he walk? <laughs> Little cross coaches box conversation. Those are the best conversations. Asking Johnny, how'd you pick up that technical in the first half? Into the lane again. Taylor left it short. And Landry Shamit is back in. He left it short, but that's State. what they want. We'll he'll take that. Mm -hmm. Kelly. Wichita State will not take that. Morris fouled by Brown. Second foul against Chad Brown. You know, I really like the way Chad Brown is competing on the boards. You know, he's not necessarily coming up with everyone. You know, going into halftime, you know, he only had three rebounds. But every time the shot goes up, he's going. They're, they're, they're going to have to put a body, two bodies on him, and he's opening up rebounds for, other, for his teammates. The boos you just heard were for a coach's box warning against Greg Marshall. Extended coach's box this year, and Marshall violated it, and he gets a warning. Reeves around Brown. Nice extra pass. Shamit missed a three. Tapped out. Stays with Wichita State. Great play by Reeves right there. He penetrates in, kicks it out to Shamit. Shamit's in a little bit of a shooting slump. Austin Reeves improving as a passer. 22 assists, just four turnovers since the start of January. Almost had another. Shamit, hard screen by Kelly, he has Davis on him. Kelly now guarded by Taylor in the post. And UCF will recover. Brown threw it off Morris. Reeves there for the hustle play. Reeves with a bounce feed to Morris. Another assist for Reeves. And Morris with a finish. Offensive foul against Davis. He just picked up number four. Great hustle by Kelly right there to get back get in position and take that charge. Now, it all started down the other end. Wichita State had several possessions, two, three, where they get, they, they, they get the rebound, they get the long shots. You get it. They come up with that loose ball. That was like the second or third one. Nice pass by Reeves, dropped it to Shaq. Austin Reeves, 6'5", 174, the string bean sophomore from Arkansas. Morris rejected, but a blocking foul called before the shot. No, no, here, here's, I said this in the first half. Right now, the players for UCF need to just take a deep breath. They're getting emotional. Whether the calls are right or not, I'm not addressing that. I'm just saying they're, they're getting caught up in the officiating more than they're caught up in the playing of the game right now. They're letting their emotions get carried away. They're frustrated. They're fussing at the rest. They, they relax. We can't control what these refs are doing. You need to worry about your execution right now, not what the guys in stripes are doing. This has been an unforgiving place for road teams. The Roundhouse Coke Arena, Wichita State, 67 and 2 here in the last five years. A frenzied crowd, a desperate team. And UCF, a different kind of desperate right now, down 11 and in some major foul trouble. 
to Jesus. Moomin, a three. Another one, one missed. No, no, another missed three. Oh, that one's okay. They're getting, you get all the way into the lane, pivot it back, get a wide open three. They have to start getting some offensive rebounds. Nobody guarded Morris underneath. 6'8", 279, and he just disappeared. Morris did the easy part. Outstanding pass by Zach Brown right there. One of the best passing teams in America is fired up. Coming up, one of the most phenomenal finishes of the year in the Big Ten. You're not going to want to miss this when we return. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. And man, that is awesome stuff. An absolutely needed win for Penn State. Ohio State finally loses in the Big Ten. Oh, what a finish. Two, two big time shots right there. Coach Pat Chambers gets a win that they need. Tony Carr, Philly's own big shot. Money player, 28 points tonight. Here's a day on Griffin three as we return to Coke Arena. Third three for Griffin, who has a team high 13. He hit a couple early. Near takeaway, Kelly keeps it alive, then Brown with a smother. I, I, I really like how Chad Brown is playing. I mean, he, he's a heart, and so he's the energy of this team. Griffin trying for a heat check three. Yeah, you know, and, and that's not a good shot. He can he, he can make that shot. He just made one the previous trip down the court. But let's get a little bit of movement first. Don't just come down and jack it up the first time you can get it off. UCF 6 of 16 now from three. Shamit. Austin Reeves going to make something happen. He does. Yes, he does. You know, as much as I've been talking about UCF's offense, for the last several years, they've won games with their defense. Now, whether Taco's in there or not, they're going to have to still win games with their defense. And so they're going to have to come up with some stops. They're going to have to come up with some rebounds. They're going to have to stop. Wichita State here, which they do. That's what they do. That's their staple. They're going to have to do what they do right now. That was a beautiful head fake on the other end by DeJesus. Cut the lead back to 10. UCF this season has been one of the strongest defensive teams in the country. Only three teams have cracked 65. Reeves playing his tail off. Nine points, three assists. And he extends the shocker lead back to a dozen. He doesn't want to give up that starting job. He's like, coach, I'm responding. Look at the hustle. Look at the hustle right there. Chad Brown. UCF trying to stay alive here in Wichita. Somebody's going to have to score. It's Cesar De Jesus here. First year Wichita State assistant embraced with Taco Fall, a young man he recruited and signed to UCF. Donnie Jones, the head coach of the Knights from 2010 to 2016. An emotional day for him as he is reunited with some of his former players and staff members before the game. No, that's so good to see. You know, Donnie Jones coached UCF. A lot of people on that bench are there because of him, because they came to play for him. You know, at the American Conference Media Day, Taco Fall sought out Greg Marshall, went up to Coach Marshall and said to him, you have Coach Jones. I love Coach Jones. And so that's, you see them reunited talking to each other right there. Taco also said, I can't wait to play against you. And Marshall said he was terrified in the moment. Catches a break with a 7-6 Taco Fall out today. Tommy Jones reunited against his former team. Had the option to run the scout for today, but obviously it's an emotional thing to have to scout your former players. Instead, it was the assistant Kyle Linstead who took the scout at Wichita State shoot-around earlier today. Well, trust me, Donnie didn't have the scout. Uh, I know he gave a lot of insights into personnel. Nice bank shot off the angle by Darrell Willis. Wanted a foul. Instead, he'll settle for two. He's played well with eight points on three of five shooting. He has played well today. Eight for Willis, 15 for Morris. Nice game for the Wichita State bigs down low. Foul against Ronald Nerger, his second. 
Wichita State has come out hot, shot six of 11 in this second half after shooting 40% in the first. Shockers have scored 78 points every home game this year. Nurture! Blocked from behind on Taylor. Blocked from behind and looked at him and let him know, I was there, baby. That's me. Penetration by Taylor. Nurture comes over the weak side defender. Not today, not in this house. I don't know how long Coach Dawkins is going to be able to keep Chad Brown on the bench. And like I said, not, he hasn't scored a bunch of points, but the energy that, that he was bringing to his team was infectious. They're going to have to get him back in there, I think. Only two points, but five rebounds plus two blocks for Brown. Rokas Ovidas in the game right now. And, and a lot of plays that aren't going to show up on the stat sheet. Sure. See, those, those, that's, that's those fouls that weren't called in the first half that Coach Dawkins is a little frustrated by. Frank Camp, who almost never turns it over, kept the dribble alive. No foul call. Willis. Good call. And Good that's call. turnover. Good call. The crowd doesn't like it, but he shuffled his feet right there. Good call. Willis had a few of those on Saturday in the loss to Houston. Wichita State turns it over 18 times. One shy of a season high. Much cleaner this Thursday evening. Now Allen's back in the game. Let's see if if he can help B.J. Taylor. B.J. needs some help. B.J. tried to do it all himself there. Rebound to Willis. Shannon. Fouled by Taylor. You know, it's, it'll be interesting to see how this game is officiated coming down the end. Shaman, nice little move. Good anticipation by BJ. A little too aggressive right there. That left arm did go in there a little bit. The officials are catching heat from both benches. They're catching heat from the players. They're catching heat from the fans. And let's see how they keep their composure as we come down the end right here. Wichita State trying to avoid its first three-game losing streak since November of 2015. Three games they played without an injured Fred Van Vliet a few years back. Shabbat, six to shoot. Long rebound to Taylor who can run. Griffin, well defended by Shabbat. Back into the hands of B.J. Taylor, the first-team all-conference preseason guard. Griffin a miss three. Ovidas keeps the possession alive. Another offensive rebound, UCF. Ovidas rewarded, but he missed the bunny. Ovidas has struggled in there. And now Frank Camp fouled, dribbling into traffic. Terrell Allen just picked up his fourth foul. Allen with four. Davis with four. And Wichita State with a big lead. Join us Saturday on ESPN for the fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. We'll see what Trey Young has in store against an Alabama team looking for a resume win at 2:15. Texas A&M returns to its old conference, takes on Kansas at 4:30. The number seven West Virginia hosts Kentucky at 7 Eastern in Morgantown. All three games streaming live as well on the ESPN app. Johnny Dawkins, UCF Knights, just four for 14 in the second half. Offensively, 291st in terms of offensive efficiency in the country. And they have fallen prey against a Wichita State defense that has improved, but has seen UCF force some things. Yeah, and it's in, you, you, you can look at the, the free throw disparity there also, which has played into it. You know, but they've, they've had some chippies and some bunnies that just haven't gone in. And, you know, getting good scoring opportunities have been hard enough. UCF, when they get those easy perimeter shots, they have to go in. And, yeah. they, and they can't allow Wichita State to do this. Oh, the second and third opportunities right there. You see Willis right there again hustling his behind off. 
Wichita State with just five points from Shamit and Frank Camp combined. Yet a lead of 14. Here's a foul to the drive by Dayon Griffin. Darrell Willis, only his first. UCF has missed six shots in a row right now. They had a stretch in the first half where they missed 10 in a row, and they brought A.J. Davis back into the game with four fouls. Yeah, and, and that's, I mean, that's them. They, as I said, they win games with their defense. Now they're going to have to find a way to generate some offense right here between Taylor and Davis. They're going to have to make that happen. A.J. Davis with five points for UCF. Taylor with nine. Griffin with a turnover. Knife turnover. Unforced errors. Okay. Don't pout about it. Let's see if we can get it back at the defensive end. A little pressure here with Shamit and Frank Camp into the game as the guards. And they're going to settle back into the zone again. Willis at the other side of the bucket. He's confident down there, though. He scored a couple times. You know he can score. He called him Machine Gun Willis last year because he shot so often. He has become a better passer and all around player this year, all keeping up the scoring prowess. There's Ovidas with a tough finish. There we go. Ovidas has had some rough possessions down there. Finally gets one to drop. Shamit. He has had a tough shooting night. Willis cleans it up. Machine and he's gun. Fouled. Machine gun. <laughs> now, they're, they're let, you said they called him machine gun last year? That's right. They'll let, they'll, let, they'll let him shoot as long as he's getting those offensive rebounds. Yeah. Especially if he's one foot away. One single day with two power conferences. Ten games with new stars, familiar legends, and some great matchups. Starting noon on Saturday, it's the Big 12 SEC Challenge on ESPN. You look at all these phenomenal matchups. These are two conferences about as deep as any in America. And Kentucky, West Virginia, a terrific one to finish that 10-game schedule. And between those two conferences, the Big 12 and the SEC, who knows how many teams you could be looking at at the tournament. Somewhere in the range of 15, maybe, between the two. Yeah, and, it's, you know, I think it's rough to have the conference challenge at this point in the season. You're in the heart and soul sure. of your conference play, and, and, and all the coaches' focus and attention and teams' focus and attention is on conference play, and all of a sudden, boom, you have this monster game thrown in there. So um, we'll see. I mean, obviously, some great contests, and as you said, both conferences are loaded with NCAA teams. Wichita State has hit 15 of its last 16 from the line, extending the lead with some excellent free throw shooting. Ovidas from Davis. Now they have to get stops now. Shamit feeds the beast. Morris, he is perfect on the night, and when that goes in, you know it's your night. Seven for seven from the field. Two of two at the line and a three. 17 points to lead all scores. Has it missed? Morris has answered the call after being benched because he missed practice with a migraine. Taylor on the floor along with Shamit and B.J. Taylor got a timeout call. Active hands right there by Shamit. We'll take it with him. Wichita State in control at home. It lost the last two games. Yes, they didn't play well. But the likes of SMU and Houston, with the exception of a couple of top teams you didn't see in the Missouri Valley. Nice play here. A chance for three as DeJesus takes it into the teeth. And I like the concentration right there by DeJesus. You know, he did what we've been saying. He penetrates, he gets in there. He had two bodies flying at him, trying to block that shot. Nice focus, eye on the rim, push it in. This is what they needed. It's, 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 it's within reaching. This. He puts it down, he goes in there. Shaq Morris is coming over. You see the nice concentration, high off the glass, gets fouled with the body. Chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Cesar DeJesus named the American Conference Rookie of the Week three times this year. He'll get another one because Marcus McDuffie leaned over the line. Yeah, the Jesus, I think, gave a little pump fake right there. <laughs> you know, it started, McDuffie started to lean. The Jesus just kind of held it to make sure he stepped in. 
Now this time, just make the foul shot, buddy. You know Marcus McDuffie was a trapeze artist as a kid? Well, he should have been able to flip out of that or something. So, so you gotta make one of those. You gotta put that in, man. Gotta put that in. No violation this time. Was he really a trapeze no, artist? No, not at all. Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> I didn't see that in the game notes. And these game notes are good. Brian Holmgren, the terrific SID here at Wichita State. Morris's first miss. Wouldn't you know it comes off a dunk try, but a foul underneath will keep it on Wichita State's end. Third against Chad Brown, the big man for the Shockers. And, and Shaq's telling him, you know, throw it a little higher. Don't just put it right at the rim. Put it up. I, I, I can go get it. Put it up a little higher. Chad Brown, the big man for the Knights, I should say. This is Richard Kelly. Another active night for him, which is typical. And Richard Kelly played well compared to the rest of the Shockers on Saturday. And Greg Marshall in his weekly coaches show with Mike Kennedy, the longtime voice of the Shockers, was asked about Kelly as one of the few bright spots. And he said, yeah, but he missed some front ends of free throws. Nice four for five at the line today. Yeah, the way coach is feeling after last week, I don't think he's going to give anyone too much credit. Mm -mm. But what happened right there, they missed the first dunk. UCF has to get that rebound. They can't let the Shockers get second and third shots at this point in the game when you're trying to claw your way back in it. Wichita State plus three on the boards. One of America's best rebounding teams. Reeves with the block on Griffin. Davis lines up his second three. Great play by Griffin. He goes in there. He gets stuck. He gets a shot block. He, doesn't, he stays with it, kicks it out to Davis. Can they get a stop and the rebound? When they've gotten stops, they haven't gotten the rebound. The possession ends when we get the ball, not when the shot is attempted. Shot. Haynes Jones. No rebound there. No rebound there, baby. On the other end, Brown got past the defense, and he is fouled by Morris. It's a good pass by Allen right there. His foul trouble today has really hurt. UCF, you know, they need him on the court. He eases things for everyone else. A little mix up at, at the defensive end down there. I think they half of them were in their regular zone, the other half were in their matchup, which, in, which resulted in a wide open shot in the corner. Georgia Moomin will replace Davis, who played the last three minutes or so with the four fouls. Allen in the game with his four right now. Coach Dawkins trying to sneak a little offense defense in. Um, with Davis with the four fouls. And a chance to do that before the next break, which will come at the under eight for a stoppage. And pretty soon, look for UCF to be a little more aggressive with this press. It's still a, it's still a token press. It's a containment press. Pretty soon, they're going to be a lot more aggressive with it. Knights with no taco fall, and Wichita State has done its work down low. No 7-6 big man there, and an easy dunk for McDuffie. No, just poor communication right there. That was a good scouting report right there, meaning Wichita State know, knew if they got it down the shack, the opposite cutting big would be wide open. Allen takes it in on Haynes Jones, and he will shoot two on the other side. Big man can pass it, too, for Wichita State. Shaq Morris with the feed. Marcus McDuffie with the stuff. Trouble and issue right now for UCF, which does not have Taco Fall done for the season. Chance McSpadden out for a sixth straight game with an ankle injury. And Johnny Dawkins has really had to manage Allen and Davis, who've had some foul trouble from the end of the first half to this one. No, you, you, and, and that's what their team is going to be. Obviously, with the injuries, they're, they're an undermanned team. And there you have three starters right there that, you know, are in significant foul trouble, and they've had to sit on the bench for significant stretches, which, you know, further alters how Coach Dawkins can game plan and, and, and coach this game. So the foul trouble definitely has hurt UCF this game. Fall traveling with the team, scheduled to have the surgery next week. And you know what else is here at UCF? Is right there. It has. Seven for 15. Eight missed free throws out of 15 in a game UCF trails by 15. 
in a game in which getting good shots has been very difficult. So when you get the easy ones, like that one, they have to go in. Morris follows his first miss with his eighth make. Largest lead for the Shockers. Great answer from Shaquille Morris today. What a season he's had. 12 points, four and a half rebounds per game, shooting the ball well from all over the court. Allen, way short in a corner three. Another rebound by Shaq. His sixth. Wichita State plus five on the boards. McDuffie. Morris fought for that rebound too. It's A.J. Davis who can take it up for UCF. Taylor has had a quiet second half. He has. Only two points in the half. Really a quiet first half until the very end of it. Shamit to Kelly. Almost had his double-double. Yeah, lost it a little bit. Slipped out of his hands right there. Griffin. I mean, that's an early shot clock three from way, way out. And Johnny Dawkins is making a quick substitution. Shaq Morris. He is on the ground grabbing his right leg. Morris behind the play injured. Taylor with a finish. But all eyes right now on Shaquille Morris. You know, UCF only has one timeout. If they had more, I think Coach Dawkins would have taken it. They're, they're, they're a little sporadic right now. See Shaq taking the three. Lands on Chant Brown's foot. Wasn't intentional, inadvertent, but he, he came down. Brown contests the shot. Shaq comes down on his foot. It's a little different angle right here. Well, good news. Morris just walked up under his own power to the bench. Standing right now. Shaq Morris has had such a turn from his first year to his fifth. They came in here really as a player who's not in good shape, not well conditioned. Greg Marshall a few years ago said he's not a count on me guy. He wanted Shaq to fight through his fatigue. And he has gotten better every season trying to unlock that great potential. Off to the locker room now with a lead of 14 for Wichita State. You hope it's nothing but a minor injury for Morris. He's okay. You're not worried. I'm not, I'm not worried. Coach Marshall's still not happy about anything. You're on, but, you're but, on this but, but, side. But Shaq's okay. A little more stress-free side of the court you found yourself on here. Shamit, that's a deep two. And Landry Shamit hits his second field goal. Knights try to find transition. Griffin over the head. Come to Jesus. No. Little nice indecision rebound by Obi does. Yeah. Nurture going at Obi does. And Nurture is fouled. Fouls on Taylor reaching, and B.J. Taylor has three fouls. You know, and Taylor, as you said, this is his fourth game. He's a preseason all-conference player, and he struggled tonight. You know, and it's easy to say, ah, he's still finding his way back, and he is. You know, but with, with, with the deficiencies in personnel because of injuries they have, and this may sound cruel, and this may sound mean, his teammates and his coach, and his, UCF can't afford to let him ease back into the season. He's talented enough. He's tough enough. He's smart enough. He can't have too many nights like tonight. UCF will play Wichita State again later in the year in early March down in Orlando. It's a tough schedule down the stretch in a vastly improved conference. A.J. Davis fouled on the take. Well, and what you just said is real. I mean, the conference is better. There are no easy games. Every game is going to be a dog fight. And we have several teams that are, that are as time goes on, are going to be fighting for tournament spots, fighting to be considered. 
SMU last week, to your point, came in here, ended Wichita State's 27 game win streak in this arena. SMU lost to the next team on UCF schedule tonight, lost by 11 at Connecticut. And, and you see right here, UCF has opportunities to get good wins. Mm -hmm. You know, Houston, Cincinnati, at Memphis. I mean, they, they have a chance, and then the conference tournament. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of ball left to be played. Now they have to capitalize. They have the, they have the talent, they have the, the aptitude, they have to capitalize. Uh, UCF only 83rd in BPI right now. 94th in Ken Pomeroy's rating, so they are not in tournament consideration right now. Had that game at Cincinnati. Houston coming up, Wichita State again. There are chances. They're going to be tougher, of course, without Taco Fall. Machine gun. It's machine gun. It's going up. No. Willis passes out of it. Leads to a Frank Cap jumper. Machine gun gets the assist. That might have hurt him to pass that. <laughs> but maybe last year he <laughs> takes that <laughs> shot, right? That's the development of a player Without in Greg Marshall's doubt. system. And I say that in jest. He's played outstanding. He's played very well tonight. His energy has been good. The refs could have called that. Here comes Willis. Willis, no. Yeah, machine gun. He's, I'm not, I gave it up last possession. This is going up, baby. B.J. Taylor. His second half struggles continue. Shabbat pickpocketed, and Deion Griffin is all alone. Pickpocket is right. Well, thank you. I get my vocabulary from you. You know, between the foul trouble and just the bodies, UCF's guys are tired. You know, at a point in the game, you know, about a minute or two ago, where they had to really lock down and make a run. Physically, just because of fatigue, they weren't, they weren't able to. Excellent find there by Connor Frankham. Rado Nerger with the easy finish. Good shooting half for Wichita State. And the Shockers have their largest lead. Knights and Shockers, bodies hitting the floor. Game played hard, played well by Wichita State. To the X Games with Scott Van Pelt, his unique take on Tiger Woods. Even par 72 with Torrey Pines today, bringing Andy North. Conversation about whether Tiger can still shine. Look at the all-star rosters drafted by Steph and LeBron. And Todd McShay breaks down Baker Mayfield and Josh Allen after three days of senior bowl practice. The Sports Center, midnight Eastern, 11 Central on ESPN. Here's what Wichita State has tonight. Tulsa coming up on Sunday, then a game at Temple will be there on Thursday in Philly. You know, and as, as we wind down the stretch here, every one of these games are important. You know, every it's, it's conference play, you're winding down, you're looking towards March. You can't have any slip-ups, you can't have any hiccups. That was last week for the Shockers. Yeah. There's no, it's no room to have that anymore. They are two games in the loss column behind Cincinnati. Wichita State and Cincinnati have yet to play. They will meet twice down the stretch. Chad Brown off the feed from Griffin, a chance for a three-point play. Now, what I like right there, Griffin got into the lane, and every other time, their players have been just attempting a shot. He got into the lane, he stayed composed, he pivoted, he found open man and dropped it off. I think they have to, as they go forward, think about doing that. It may be too late in tonight's game. Fourth foul on Nerger. Brown is way off the mark on a free throw. UCF 9 for 19 at the line, and Wichita State 20 of 24 for the strike. And obviously, that's something that's going to be addressed. That's something that is glaring. They're shooting less than 50% from the foul line. You see a team that, that struggles so hard to score, you have to make the freebies. UCF ends its shoot arounds by splitting the players up into groups. And saying, all right, make seven free throws in a row, and everybody takes one. And there wasn't a stretch of seven in a row at the end of this practice. And, and it's carried over to the game, and it's something that will be addressed. I'm sure Coach Dawkins and the coaching staff will address it. Tonight's been a little frustrating. You know, they obviously are on the fly trying to make adjustments to the team. He has to keep, in many ways, as much as what they're doing is the same, and your focus is the same, and how you want to win is the same. You know, he's had to reinvent how his team is going to play, what the points of emphasis are going to be several times this year. And 
Then you go through, and he's going to do it again now. You lose Taco. Okay, that's been such an integral part of every aspect of our team. So let's reinvent ourselves. And so they won the first game against uh, South Florida. They come into one of the toughest places in the country to play. Put up a little fight, but lose. And now they're going to regroup. We already saw their remaining schedule. They're going to regroup. I'm sure Coach Dawkins will get them ready, and they're going to fight all the way through. Clearly, the foul trouble hurt them tonight. Their best guys ended up sitting over there next to him, you know, coaching instead of playing. But I think they're going to be fine as they go forward. Well, you think about what UCF could have been at the start of the year. This was a team that came off one of its best Division I seasons, 24-12, and 12, Final Four of the NIT last year. And they were receiving votes in the AP Top 25. You lose B.J. Taylor for 16. Aubrey Dawkins, Johnny's son, transferred from Michigan. Supposed to start at the two or three. Tore his labrum before the season started. Taco Fall missed a couple of games. Was bothered by injuries all year long. Chance McSpadden has missed six. And UCF has just never been full. You, you play with what you have. I know you have to adjust as a coach. But however this season ends up, UCF will have never had its full lineup on the court. And there's nothing you could do. It's, it's a frustrating reality. And, and that's something that Coach Dawkins... He's not hanging his hat on that. He under, he knows, hey, we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure fi with the group that we have, with the healthy players that we have. We're going to we're going if we're going down, and I'm not saying they're going down, but we're going down swinging. And he's made adjustments along the way. But you're right. You know, at the end of the year, whatever their record ends up, there's not going to be an asterisk next to it to say, you know what? But they had three starters out, if not for the whole season, for significant chunks of the season. You know, so, and that's 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 life. That's life in college basketball. But. This team right now is 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 a, 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 is a hollow shadow of the team that, that showed up at media day. Connor Frank Camp after a couple of free throws by Allen. Wichita State has led this game throughout. UCF has never led. Tied for the first 67 seconds. All shockers since. And then and on top of everything else, they've had a bunch of bad bounces. McDuffie. Yes. A three. UCF has allowed more than 65 for just the third time this season. 83 of the most points the Knights gave up. That was to West Virginia back at the Advocare Invitational. Meanwhile, Wichita State has scored 78 in every home game, and it'll get there with one free throw from Frank Kemp. Yeah, they'll get there. You think Frank Kemp might hit one of these? 18, I, I 18 for 18 at the line this year. You're going out on a limb. I, I, no, I, I, I didn't say he, he would hit one. I said they'd get to 78. Okay. So we got 154 left, and I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure they'll get one point in the next minute, 54. Even sturdier limb by there. Frank Kemp, there it is. I'm right again. <laughs> Congratulations to you, sincerely. Frank Kemp, 20 of 20 at the free throw line, the redshirt senior. Just the question right now with UCF is how fast can they bounce back? This is a disappointing performance. They know that. How fast can we bounce back? And at the other end, we were wondering how Wichita State would bounce back. Uh, yeah, and I wonder how, how Coach, you know, I, I'm wondering how Coach Marshall feels over there. What do you think? I, I think he's going to be upset. Why? Because that's what coaches do. That's, that's what we are. You're never happy. Upset about what in particular? Well, you know, I think that his backcourt play still isn't up to where he wants it to be. I mean, you look at what I, who I think is one of the best players in the country, best guards in the country, and yeah, we have some very good guards. Landry Shamit, you know, he comes in, he has four points. You know, now he has five assists, but the, he has to get more than four points, regardless of who they're playing. He has to be a threat. The opposition has to worry about him every night. Now, I'm saying that, and they're going to end up winning by close to 20, sure. if not more than 20. But in looking at the big picture, and this, and this, this program, you know, Coach Marshall has this, but it's, it's big picture. They don't, they don't care about games. They care about championships. And for them to accomplish what they want to accomplish in March, Landry's going to have to play better than he has the last couple of games, including tonight. 
Willis, spinorama. Oh, Darryl Willis with the icing. Machine gun. You shouldn't have told me that that was his nickname. I should not have now told that you I that. Know that I, I, I had him a couple more times. Machine I'm gun. I'm not baby. sure you remember his first name <laughs> anymore. Machine gun. Machine gun Willis. 12 for Willis, 19 for Morris. Ten different shockers have scored in the game, at least four points. Brown, perhaps the final bucket for UCF. It'll be Wichita State, though, to snap a two-game losing streak. And, and Brown's going to have to continue to, to, to grow in his role. Mm -hmm. I mean, he plays hard. He plays with energy. You know, no one, one person is going to make up for Taco's absence. It's going to be about to be a collection of them. Pick your heads up, grow from it, move on to the next one. Wichita State back to winning ways. 81-62. The Shockers move to 16-4. And, and the nation's 17th ranked team snaps a two-game losing streak. Nice balanced performance for Greg Marshall's team, which will stay home and get Tulsa on Sunday. For John Thompson III, our entire crew from Wichita, this is Kevin Brown saying so long from Coke Arena in Kansas. We take you out of the studio. Adnan Burke, Dallin Cuff, and Tom Cream take it away.